out of my face. You're blocking my view. Shut up. Stop talking. Just go the hell away. All the world needs is me. I got my values. So you can keep yours, all right? I don't get people. Never have, never will. The World Ends With You Remix came out on the Nintendo Switch in October of 2018. This is a release of the smartphone port of the original game that came out on the Nintendo DS in 2007. I had played the original version of this game and was excited to be able to play it again on a new console. Should this game have ended on the DS, or is this the start of a new beginning? Welcome back to another episode of Kinda Late Reviews. The with you starts off with a young man waking up in Shibuya, not knowing where he is or what is going on. He ends up in front of the statue of Hachiko and gets attacked by some frogs that he cannot fight back against. Soon after, he meets a young girl and makes a pact with her, where he finds out he's in a game fighting for his life. All he knows is he needs to trust his partner if he wants to make it through the seven days of the game, where many players die and only survivors get to live. Neku is the main character's name, and for some reason he only remembers his name, not how he ended up in the game or where he is. The young girl he made a pact with so that he could play the game and fight against monsters called Noise, her name is Shiki. He does not trust her or anyone at first, he thinks it's all crazy and doesn't need a partner or friend to survive. After finishing the first day and waking up somewhere else, he learns about the people controlling the game and they are called Reapers. Their job is to earn points by killing players using the noise they create. The rules of the game are straightforward. Every day, the game director, also a Reaper, comes up with some tasks the players have to do. Players have a time limit and only one group has to finish the day's challenge and get to live for another day. Fail, and everyone gets erased. Soon after, Shiki and Neku meet two other players, a dimwit known by the name of Beat, and his partner, a younger girl who is more level-headed, known as Rhyme. Beat is my personal favorite character in the game. He's just too funny and always looking to do the right thing even if he does or says something stupid in the process. As the week goes on, you learn more about these characters and start to build a relationship with them. This is the first thing the game does right. You being Neku, do not trust anyone and could care less about these characters, but quickly, you start to see them for who they are, faults and all, slowly care about them all. Things go from great to bad fast with the characters. Neku finds out they are dead, playing for a second chance at life. As the week goes on, it ultimately ends up being Neku and Shiki having to fight the Game Master on Day 7 for their chance to get out of this death game. The game is not that short, being only 7 days though. After winning the game, Neku wakes up again in Shibuya Crossing, alone, again with his memories this time. All except for his death, are returned. Someone else has that information. Shortly after Neku goes to Hachigo's statue again, and he meets his next partner, who forces a pact on him. His name is Joshua, and he's a smart fellow who comes off as an arrogant ass, but does not really care about playing the game. He has an ulterior motive to take on the composer who controls the game world, being the new composer. The new game master is interesting. Unlike the first week who focused on food like a chef, this one is a mathematician who likes to do riddles through numbers. There's a feature in this game that lets you scan the area to fight noise, which there's four different types, three of which are more prominent. There's a red type, which is a typical enemies, there's a green type, which is a pig, and if you defeat it, it drops red pins. And there's a yellow type, which is a mission to objective. There's also a black type, which is more rampant and isn't more prominent until later on in the game. Pins, which I have yet to mention, are the weapons of the game. Think of the material from Final Fantasy. Give the player powers to fight the noise, each do different things based on how the controller is swung in TV mode or by touch on the console screen. This is the only way to use pins to fight. This is the worst part of the game. The motion controls are just garbage. They barely respond to what you want them to do leading to many hits that should not have happened, and losses that could have been avoided. I did not get to play the game in tabletop mode since I was recording it, so I cannot say if the touch is any better. You can also change the difficulty of the game at any time from normal, easy, or hard, netting you more or less EXP for the fights, and different types of pins will drop from enemies. As for the scan feature, you can also read the minds of people not in the game. This game takes place in the alternate plane of reality, which is called the Underground, or UG for short. There's also the real ground or RG where the living dwell, and the living cannot see or interact with the UG except for at designated shops. The player can also get new clothes and pins for battle. The weird thing is, Neku can scan Joshua and see parts of his memories, which points to seeing how Neku was killed, leading to the distrust in his partner since he could have been the one who killed him. Upon finishing up the second week, Neku is once again waking up in Shibuya alone playing the game for one final time. Only problem is, each time you enter, there's a fee, and you lose that which is the most important to you. The first was his memories. Second was Shiki, and this time, it was all other possible players. This is where the game gets interesting. Players cannot fight without a partner, or will fade if their partner is destroyed. Minor spoiler, but Beat lost his partner, Rhyme, and was saved through a loophole, and chose to become a Reaper. When Neku is trying to figure out how to survive without a partner, Beat disregards his Reaper being to play the game one last time as Neku's partner. This is where the story shines the most in my opinion. The two of them just clash and yet work together so well. 
You laugh and you feel sad for them. You want to see them survive to the end. In a game where everything is now at stake and the whole world seems to be falling apart, and Neku, the boy who trusted no one, is fighting for all the friends he had made in the two weeks of this death game. Is a single driving force to play through these terrible controls. Won't spoil the end for you, but the last few fights are crazy. You push the mechanics of this game, and the boss designs are outstanding. Let me talk to the art in general. It's great. It feels like a manga since the original hardware this was made for couldn't handle 3D graphics well, and the use of the drawn-out characters running around looks wonderful. The backgrounds are great, they look like an anime version of the city of Shibuya, which I have visited, including going to see Hachiko statue. So me playing this game again was more interesting for the location to me, which a lot of it isn't accurate, but a nice play in the real area. On the DS, the combat really shined. Use of the two screens was great. Neku could be on the bottom and your partner's on the top. You control both of them at the same time to fight the noise. You could use a combo system to sync up with the partner to do a devastating final attack. This is lost in the remix version. One screen and the use of the motion controls also control the partner, who will usually not work out all that great. They either don't show up since another pin will be doing the same thing as them for attacking commands, or they'll miss the target a lot. Which is a bummer since the partner will help make the fight go faster and easier. Some are needed for boss fights to even work. Enough with the negativity on controls, let's talk about the music. There's two options, the original and the remix version of the songs in the game. Both are great. The original is more instrumental, while the remix has vocals. The music pulls you into the game, and you'll find yourself sort of dancing along as the game ramps up. The other interesting thing about the music is, you see Neko at the beginning of the fight, listening to the beat of the music, getting pumped up for the fight ahead of him. Nice touch to his character, who wears headphones all the time. Aside from the visuals, controls, and sound is the story, which draws you in with a mystery, then reveals a little bit over time, just, just enough though to keep you still interested, and in guessing all the way through. I played this before and was still surprised the second time around on what was happening at times, especially when the ending, which will probably blow your mind if you have not played the game yet. All the characters are unique, including the main character, who seems lacking at first, but grows with the story and changes drastically. Who is your favorite character? Let me know in the comments below, or on social media, linked below. This game is hard to recommend on the Switch, as it feels like a watered down and hassle of a game to get through with the poor motion controls, yet the positives are all still there besides that. So I would say pick this up on the DS if you can find it. If not, try this game in tabletop mode, it might be better since it was designed with touch in mind. I'm sure you'll love it as much as I do, if you give it the chance. As mentioned before, I played this on the Nintendo Switch. It took me about 15 hours to complete the story mode, but equally on normal, hard, and easy difficulties. Easy, recommended for the motion controls, and it was still kinda hard. I died around 30 times before finishing the game. Spend your world and try this game. Thank you for your time, I appreciate you valuing my opinion of this game. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for more. Hit that like button, it helps out the channel, and share this video with friends, family, and heck, even your pets. Let me know what you think about the World Ends With You remix in the comments below. I'm already late from an extra view. See you then.